All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy, Tony Shen. I'm back with another FL Studio beat tutorial. Today, we're gonna start a new series on this channel. It's um, more focused towards sound design, which I think is often overlooked just because a lot of beat makers or producers just like to scroll through sample packs. But in my opinion, sound design is like, sound design is kind of fun. There's no wrong way to do it. Like if you mess up, you mess up. At least you found a cool way to like make a sound. And um, if you've been to this channel before, you know that the meat and potatoes of the channel is like, you don't need to spend $5,000 on VSTs and stuff like that. Um, FL Studio or like whatever DAW you're on, they offer a lot of really good tools in of itself. And then if you understand these tools, it just uh, it just gives you a lot more dimensions to express yourself with. So with this FL Studio sound design tutorial, we're just gonna stick with the stock plugins. Today we're gonna use the 3X oscillator. I think every version of FL Studio has it. It's a very universal thing and you can still make a lot of cool sounds with it considering how basic of a synthesizer or of a VST it is. So yeah, let, now that we got that out of the way, let's get straight into our tutorial. Like I said earlier, we're gonna use the 3X oscillator. So with 3X oscillator, um, it's, just to kind of go over the very basic details, um, it's kind of like, it's, it's just like a, your basic synth, like what you expect out of every synthesizer, right? Like what 3X oscillator means is that there's just three oscillators that you can create your sound with. Um, so there's a few things just, I don't know, this is like the, my, 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 so this is like my first episode. So I'm assuming um, we're starting everything from scratch and we're just, you know, giving you a basic lecture, right? Um, there's a few dimensions to sound, right? First, it's just the tone of your sound. That's what the three oscillators kind of control, right? From the start, it's a very basic sine wave, right? This is what a sine wave sounds like. And right now, all three of these oscillators are playing because as you can see, there is some volume coming out of them, right? So if we just turn all these off, it's just one oscillator. And then there's just, uh, there's very basic like variables that you can tweak with this VST. That's why I, I wanna start with it first because it's very basic and fundamental. This is the course pitch. So this is like how many semitones you can pitch up and down. So that's like for bigger, intervals of pitch that you want to like mess with right so this right now is set to 24 so that's basically two octaves higher or like set to two octaves higher right so right, that's by default so if you wanted like a lower pitch like a lower octave you would just pitch it down 12 and each one of these numbers means it's semitone um so that's an octave down right that's an octave down even below that so by default it's just set to 24 and then this is set to 12 and then this is set to just zero, so I guess there's like some bass in there, right? See, as I, as I turn up the volume on this, you hear a little bit more bass. So that's what the chorus pitch does, and the fine tune is like smaller uh, bits of pitch that you can manipulate. And that's good for like when you have multiple um, oscillators activated, so right now only oscillator one is playing because I turned down the volume for, for the other to zero. So only one is playing. If I turn on two a little bit, you kind of hear two sounds being played, right? Um, if I set the course pitch both to the same, so it's playing the same exact note. If I adjust the fine tune a little bit, you get a little bit of detune, which sounds a little bit better. It sounds a little bit more lush. It sounds a little bit wider, right? It just gives it a little bit more texture. So detuning kind of like changes somewhat like the tone of your sound by kind of like offsetting the pitch a little bit and just making it sound a little bit more interesting in my opinion. I always like detuning my sounds when I'm um just a little bit, just to add a little bit more, like, more, more, more width and like lusciousness to your sound. And this is the panning. As I adjust this, you can hear this going to the left, to the right. Right, it's pretty useful if you want to make it sound a little bit wider, like you pan this a little bit to the left and this to a little bit to the right. It makes it sound a little bit bigger. Right, and that's overall like what these knobs really do. You can play around with these and mess around. You don't really want to offset the pitch, the course pitch like that because it just makes it out of tune. Unless that's what you want to go for, like an off tune something, which could be useful. But if you're going to make like a full out melody with this, I wouldn't really recommend messing with the course pitch that much unless it's with octaves. Now let's go to this section. This is basically the waveform, right? By default, everything is set to a sine. Sine is like your most pure form of a wave. It just sounds very clean. This is what it sounds like, right? And let's turn everything off 
again just make sure that only one oscillator is playing so you can isolate the sound and like hear what each each of these waves sounds like this is a square wave <laughs> Sounds a little bit more robotic, right? This is kind of like, I don't know what this wave is called. Um, this, you can actually um, sample like certain, um, you can pull up certain um, waveforms, which is pretty cool actually. Um, yeah, this is a saw wave. It's a little bit less harsh and like video gamey than a square wave. It's still very, very useful. Um, if you want like a little bit more like zing to your sound rather than just like a basic boring sine wave Right, and then This I guess is another type of saw wave and this is white noise, which is really useful if you just want to add a little bit of like Substance to your sound like you want to beef up your sound a little bit in a very subtle way, right? So There's that so that's like your sound, right? Let's come up with like a sound that we could use. I want to make like a key type sound, right? So at the very base of my key, I do want it to have like some type of like a soothing type layer to it, right? So we are going to use a sine wave for like our first oscillator. But the beauty with having three oscillators is you can mix these different tones and different waves together to like create new sounds. So we're going to add a little bit of this, right? We're going to turn up the mix level a little bit. And let's add like a saw sound to this. So when you mix a sine and a saw together, this is what it sounds like, right? And I actually want to turn the saw down a little bit. And then you can also mess with these. This is like the phase offset. So it kind of messes with the stereo width and detune, like I said earlier, you could there's there's actually a detune knob. You can manually do it by offsetting the fine tune, but there's also a detune knob attached to each oscillator. So basically the, the there's really no like technique to sound design other than the fact that all you're doing is just guessing and checking playing with different knobs right and then seeing what sounds good so right now we're just focused on the tone and not really like the length of of the note once we find a tone then we can kind of like manipulate the length of the note and like the attack the delay and the sustain i'm going to teach you that in a bit but first let's just find like a very desirable tone mess with the detune knob um i might you know turn the course pitch down an octave that sounds pretty good right you can make it sound a little bit more interesting by manipulating the envelope and the just the the length and like the sustain of, of the sound right so this is an fl studio stock plugin so you have a lot of like the common fl studio things that is very that should look very familiar to you once you enable the envelope it gives you the ability to control like the, the amplitude the amp and like the volume and like how you want the sound to actually be shaped with the key you can add a little bit of attack that's just like how long it takes to like build up right so here's what no attack sounds like sounds pretty good but if you add a little bit of attack it just gives it that little bit of an offset a little bit of like a ramp to go up into your sound i like having a little bit of attack your hold is like you know how obviously exactly what it sounds like right hold your decay is like when it, it drops down so the key i mean you can sustain it all the way there's no rule against that but if you have a little bit of like a, a decay it sounds good too right you hear how after a bit after the hold end it kind of drops down a little bit you can also you know have no hold and just only have decay and you hear how like the sound drops afterwards right and sustain is just how long it sustains for, right? And release is like once you release the note, how long does it release for, right? So if you turn up release all the way, even after I release the note, it still plays. So like having like some type of key like this with a little bit of release does make it sound a little bit better. It just gives it a little bit more of a tail, right? It makes the note sound a little bit wider and I like having a little bit of release.
Now, there's other things that we could get into, but I think we could just save for another time because it's just a very basic sound design tutorial. There's other stuff like LFOs, which is a low frequency oscillator, which allows you to control certain things. Like for example, if you had like, if you wanted to link this LFO to like a pitch, for example, right? Like you wanted to link it to your pitch, you can make it, you can give it like a tremolo or like a, vib you can give it like a vibrato, right? Make it like oscillate up and down in pitch, which sounds very good with keys. Like it, it kind of reminds you of like a vintage, like Rhodes piano where you have a little bit of a vibrato on it. You could also have that to like the, the pan and it makes it like, you can, you can make it, you know, oscillate back and forth on your panning, which sounds pretty cool. So there's other things that we could get into, but I just think for now, for a very basic fundamental level, you don't have to get too much into that because why do you need an LFO if you can't even find like a, make it create a very basic, like soothing tone, right? Right now we have our basic keys, right? And sound design doesn't just end on the channel rack um here, right? There's other things that you can add in terms of like effects, right? Like for example, this piano, this key, Sounds good, but um, it doesn't end right here, right? Sound design is um, effects as well, right? Like routing effects and stuff. So let's route it to insert one, which is control L. Um, that just links it to your, your mixer track, right? Let's go into our effects. So there's a bunch of like different effects that you could add to make your sound a little bit more interesting. We're gonna focus on the most basic ones today, which is just EQ, um, compression and reverb slash delay, right? So what EQ does, like you probably used EQ before, but what it allows you to do is boost certain frequencies or cut out certain frequencies or like filter cer certain frequencies out. Um, fundamentally, what I like to do with all of my sounds is just make sure they don't clash. Like that's all I really do with EQ. I don't really add stuff. Like sometimes I do with vocals, but when it comes to like instruments and like these other sounds, I don't really do that much adding or like I don't boost that many frequencies unless I absolutely have to. Most of my, EQ usage comes from subtracting EQ or like cutting out certain frequencies, right? So say I have this chord, right? Now, as you can see with this, um, with this, with this oscilloscope, I forgot what the, what the name of this, <laughs> of this um, visual is, but um, you can see that the majority of the frequencies kind of like jump from around here, right? Um, I think around here, it gets like your bass, like your 808 and stuff like that. So what I like to do is cut some of like the lower frequencies out just to make sure that your melody doesn't really interfere with your bass because you want your bass to slap, right? You want your bass to cut through everything else. So what that does, it does thin out the sound a little bit, but it ensures that it doesn't clash with the bass. Other thing is compression. What compression does fundamentally is um, like you have your, your sound wave, right? What compression does is once a certain ratio gets activated within like a decibel level. So like say, let's pull up Fruity Compressor, right? So if you look right here um, at the loudness level, right? If you set your threshold to like negative, you know, like 20 dB, which is like around here or like, you know, a, a certain threshold level, once the waveform gets past a certain threshold level, you can open up your ratio, which like basically divides your sound waves by like a certain ratio and it just compresses it. it is exactly what it sounds like, right? So if I open up my ratio, he sounds and, and you know, decrease my threshold. You see that more of the sound wave gets chopped up and just um, gets decreased by that, that ratio. And you can use a compressor to like make your sound sound a little bit bigger, to make it punchier, right? To um, give it more oomph. Right, and then you can also uh, control when the compressor kicks in by manipulating the attack and release knob. Say you really wanted to like tame your sound or like make it sound bigger or punchier, you could use compressor. In this case, I don't really think it's that necessary. I just wanted to pull it up just to show you what it does in case you wanted to, you know, add that to your sound design game. So I don't really think the compressor really does anything in this case to the sound really, but you can add it if you want to. So we're not really gonna like add that to our chain. Next thing I wanna do is talk about reverb and delay, which are like for me, for when I do sound design is like pretty important because I like doing like very big and airy and just atmospheric type sounds. That's just me when it comes to sound design. That's the thing with sound design. Like you really, you can really be yourself. Like, you know, a melody can be played certain ways and stuff like that. But sound design is really what defines you like characteristically. It's like a lot easier to identify with a specific type of tone or like sound than like a melody, right? In my opinion. So 
that's really the beauty of sound design. And I really like using a lot of like unique reverbs and delays. Um, and there's like a lot of cool things you can do with that. Reverb is basically just atmosphere, right? Like how big you want the sound uh, to sound and you can like simulate certain environments or right? if you right click here on the presets, like, you know, you can make it sound like it's in certain places, like a venue, like a giant cathedral, if you want it to sound really big, or like just a small studio. Your most important thing is mainly just your wet knob and the size of your reverb. Like how big do you want it to sound, the size and, and your wet knob. We can go over the other reverb stuff right now, but since the focus of this is just your 3x oscillator, I'm not gonna go into that that deeply. Your wetness is just how much of the reverb you want to mix, and your dry is like how much of the original sound it is, right? And then the size is obviously just how big you want the size to be. And then the delay, um, yeah, it's just you know, bump, 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 bump. You know, wetness, same thing. Like how much of the original sound, like how much of the delay you want to be mixed in. I don't want that much. And your feedback level is just how much feedback you want which controls like how loud and how long the delay sustains. Like I just wanted to briefly cover over the effects just in case you guys wanted a little bit more additional information on like, or want to know what to do after you make your basic sound through the channel, like through the VST itself. Like there's other things that you could do after that in, in, in the mixer. Just because like the main focus of this tutorial obviously is on the 3X oscillator and not, you know, how to mix it or like how to add effects to it. So. Um, it's going to be a brief covering of like what I think are the most important effects that you're going to need to add when it comes to sound design. What's going to happen now is I'm just going to record this keyboard sound that we made together in. And I'm going to teach you how to make a bell on top using the 3X oscillator. And then I'm just going to make the whole thing into a beat just to give you guys context of what it could sound like in an actual production, right? So. Um, let me just record this in real quick and I'll be right back. I just made a very basic chord melody with the keys that we made. It's very, very simple and very easy to like just work with, right? Okay, so now we're just gonna add a very simple basic bell over it. Um, using the same VST, which is the 3X oscillator stock plugin style. Um, right, let's just start a brand new one. Now with a bell, it's gonna be a higher pitch, like a higher kind of like a frequency range. So what you can do to like get into that range is just pitch up your chorus pitch. Um, so in this case, you know, 12 semitones, so 36. Let's turn this off first, these other oscillators. You can tell it's higher pitched, right? Um, so with a bell, you can get a little bit more crazy when it comes to like using the waveforms, right? With the key, you want it to be relatively stable. With the bell, just cool things that you can do, right? So, um, let's let's make play around with like a, a square wave, right? Sounds more video gamey. It's okay. It's a bell. Whatever. Whatever. Sound design is whatever you want it to be, right? So you can add that chorus pitch. You can add a little bit of detune on it. Right now, it sounds a little bit rough. It's okay. We're gonna cut out some of that stuff using EQ um, afterwards. So it's okay right now if it sounds a little bit rough, there's other things you could do in the mixer track, right? Um, let's open up our other oscillator. Um, just turn the mix knob to like maybe 50%. And what a sound wave does is kind of like soothes out the sound the more you mix it in, right? So, um, makes it sound more stable like the more you mix it in, right? Which is just the mix knob. And we can actually pitch up the course a little bit, the chorus pitch, just pitch that up an octave. And just add a little bit of detune, just to give a little bit more texture to the sound. And then, I'm actually kind of satisfied with this tone, right? If you open, if you, if you play it with the melody. The next thing we need to do is just kind of, uh, do the same thing we did earlier, which is the envelope. With a uh, with a bell, you want it to have a much shorter like sound in general. So you want just more decay. I would turn down the hold all the way and then sustain all the way and just have a decay. So just much shorter. You can add a little bit more release. And having no attack sounds pretty good actually. But I like just adding a little bit of attack. Now let's 
um, link this to the mixer as well. And like I said earlier, I do want to filter out some of the frequencies, right? So let's open up our parametric EQ. Right now, let's, if, if you drop down the shelf of this, of this band a little bit, it makes it sound a little bit more smoother. It makes it sound a little bit more desirable and less sharp to your ear. So if we didn't have that, it sounds kind of sharp, right? And it kind of like pierces through everything, which might not be that desirable, right? So if you have this on a little bit and just, you know, drop down um, and use this kind of like a filter, right? Makes it sound a little bit more desirable. And again, we can add a little bit of reverb just to open it up. And I think it sounds good without a delay, right? And if we um, record the melody in, um, we can get the melody and we're gonna, you know, just hear, see what it sounds like. Okay, so here's what it sounds like with the melody we just made on top and just add it on top, right? Very simple melody. So we made a really nice keyboard sound. We made a very nice belt to add on top of that as a melody. Um, I'm just gonna quickly arrange it into a beat. I'm just gonna quickly like add some drums and some you know 808s to it just to make it sound like it's a beat, right? Just to give you context of what it sounds like. Just just to give you guys like a quick sum up of like what we did today. Um, sound design. First of all, most importantly, it's whatever you want it to be, right? There's no written rules to sound design. You can get as creative as you want. It's like coming up with new colors, basically. Like you can get as creative as possible, have your own process. I'm just giving you a few techniques that you could use to kind of like get you the sound you want, but there's really no rules to this, right? Like you'd be as creative as you want. And basically just understand like what really makes a sound, right? First is just the tone of the sound, like mixing different waves together, um, you know, your saw wave, your sine waves, your square waves, like just knowing how to use them in a combination to make your tone, um, knowing how to add some detune, knowing what pitch you wanted by setting the coarse pitch and maybe offsetting the fine pitch a little bit just to give it a little bit more of a deeper layer of detune. Um, and the second thing is just like the amplitude and just just uh, the shape of your sound, right? Like, do you want a little bit of attack? Do you want it to sustain very long, like for keyboards, right? Or do you want it to just have a quick decay, like a bell or like a pluck? That's really like the basics you need to know with 3X Oscillator. We could go deeper in, but this is just a very fundamental like lesson or a very fundamental tutorial. So we're not gonna go that deep in, but what I'm gonna do now is just gonna quickly add some drums and add an 808 to it just to make a loop and I'll see you guys in a bit. So, okay, so we just added some basic drums, a basic 808 like claps and some stuff like that. Um, Just a quick note, uh, some of these sounds are from my new drum kit, Tony Shan Slap Pack Volume 3, which is still in the works, not 100% done yet, but just a quick teaser slash demo of the sounds that you are gonna hear on my new drum kit. Um, yeah, here's the loop that we made with the sounds that we made from scratch, 100%, all by ourselves, unique to us only. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys found something useful from this tutorial, if you guys took something away from it, if you guys, um, are super happy and super excited to make your own sound by yourself after seeing this video, please drop a subscribe, please drop a like, drop a comment, any support really helps. Um, give me some suggestions for new videos or like new VSTs you guys want me to explore, stuff like that. Um, with that being said, I'm gonna play the loop for you guys that we made all by ourselves, starting from the sound design. Here's, here it is. <laughs>